Ah, three, two, one. What's up, guys? This is the Toasty Podcast. My name is Sky. And I'm Maddie B. Today, we're talking about healthcare. We always do controversial topics over casual conversation. So, let's get toasted. Let's do it. Whenever I guess the intro is done playing. We're here. Oh. We're here, bro. So, guys, I don't know if you saw my last episode. It was Facebook Live. Um, I've started doing those a few more every once in a while until I can we can get our foot in the door and mm. do more live things. You know, and I was thinking that might end up being YouTube. You know, you can't go live on YouTube until you have a thousand followers. Yeah. I'm starting to second guess myself, and that's because we uploaded our video that was on Facebook Live to YouTube. And not even a day goes by, and it was taken down. It wasn't taken down immediately. Mm-hmm. It was, they didn't tell me whenever I uploaded it like they normally do, hey, there's something going on here. They took it down after the fact. So what, what reason what that did means, they give you? What that means is I think someone reported it. And the reason they gave me, the only reason I know any of this exists, whenever that happens on YouTube, and it's because you – um, hmm. go against their community guidelines, so they say. They mm-hmm. throw up a warning whenever you log into your account, and they say, hey, creator, you have a warning. Your last video you posted did not follow our community guidelines. Yeah, You do it again. It's a strike. Please see what that means in our community guidelines. Link, click, cool. I went over it. I went through it because that's what everyone is doing apparently. Tim Pool, um, freaking Steven Crowder, all these guys are like, okay, fine, let's go over their community guidelines yeah. and see what's up. Yeah. Well, I did. And there's nothing in there that says anything about us talking about vaccines the way we did. It obviously says you can't make any blatantly obvious false statements yeah. about the vaccines. We Clearly we didn't. We didn't do. We didn't at all. What, uh, so there's no way to know if somebody reported it? There's or? no way to know if someone reported it. I've added them, of course. I, I'm on Instagram all the time. Um, the real sky day, if you guys want to follow me, but I always post stories like that. So I was like, Hey, YouTube, what are you guys doing? Um, uh, why did you guys mm. do this? I posted their community guidelines, the vaccine part of it and said, Psh, this is it. Really? What did I do wrong? Like all that stuff. I tried to find their support email. They don't really have one. It's hard to find. Of and whenever course. you go to their yeah. support, whenever you go to their support, it's like, please look at our support page and it shows you, you know, how to upload a video and all this other crap. It's like regular support like that. It's not like my video was taken down. Why? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know how to get to the XX. I don't know how to do all that stuff. I'm not big on YouTube yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Like Tim pool obviously has a pool. (laughs) Tim pool has a pool. He can, he can go and say, I need to talk to YouTube. Give me their freaking whoever, you know, agent or whatever pisses me off. And that's what set this whole thing off. That's what makes me want to get dive even more into healthcare. Fine, you know what? If they don't want us to say anything incorrect, quote unquote. Then we'll just keep saying what we want to say. But I'm not going to let YouTube determine what type of content that I put out. Period. Exactly. Yeah. No. Not at all. Not at all. And I know you said we need YouTube. Maybe we do, but I mean, we don't. I, I wouldn't say we need. YouTube. By the way, it's that useful. video is still up on Facebook Live. Yeah, that's and, weird. That Facebook and, is okay with it. They allowed me to pay to spread it, to advertise it. It's called oh, boosting a did? post. They huh. allowed me to do that. And I didn't even click the link that says it's for politics. Really? Because you have to specify oh. now. What did, you, so what did you say it was about? When you specify, you have to give your address, you have to give your social security number, and you have to give your license, and they have to make sure you are who you are. And they send you a letter in the mail, and you have to write that code down they sent you, the letter. What? Not kidding. That's how they verify, and then they're, you're allowed to do political posts. So instead of doing that, I didn't do any what of that. What the crap? And I didn't check it because I wanted to make sure. The, I didn't okay, check the box. Okay, hold on. Whoa, slow, slow down for one second. So you have to give out your social security number to Facebook, right? I'm pretty sure they asked for that. I'm pretty damn sure. I, I can't even remember your, exactly. Even your DL, even your driver's license. Driver's number? license and address for sure, guaranteed, and your phone number. So they got to know where remember. you live. By that, they can probably get your voting registration and see, which, see, which, see what you registered as. Honestly. So if it's a Republican, I wonder if they share it the same way as if you I Democrat. wonder if they do, but you know what? They don't know anything. I doubt it. Because I didn't select that box. Yeah, don't do that. And if I you're said, on Facebook and you want to do something like that, don't don't give Facebook your... your uh, 
information no, like that. No, well, I, they already have a lot of my information, dude. The thing is, is I'm already. I don't care about that part of it because I'm on social media like crazy, yeah, all over well, the place, dude. Well, that makes sense, but all still. over the place, and it's all the same username, and I'm everywhere in the address or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. But as far as the podcast is concerned, and and sharing a video mm-hmm. to a targeted audience that also gets their data sold, by the way, <laughs> that. Uh, it didn't. They didn't ask questions, and it's still up to this day. If you guys want to go check out that video, please don't go to YouTube. Go to Facebook Live yeah, or to, Facebook, our Facebook page, the Toasty Podcast, of course, and uh, you can follow us there, of course, and then also see that freaking gold video. It's a good Apparently, one. Apparently, it was a good one. Yeah, we'll be doing more of those in the future, of course. Probably every other or so episode for the deep dives like this one, we won't do them. For the guest episodes, we won't do them because right. imagine that guests don't we want don't to get want on and guests to be, be all live. apprehensive and yeah. It just ruins the vibe, dude. It ruins the vibe. Speaking of freaking vibes, how about this vibe right now in our studio? Oh, yeah. You like the lights and the setup? So this is all new. I was up till 4 a.m. last night setting this crap up for you guys. It'll probably change next week because they always do. That's just how I am. But until I get it perfect and right and cozy, I want it to be cozy. I want you guys to feel like you're at home with the Toasty Podcast. Yeah. So anyway, let's get into our actual topic. Okay. Healthcare. Yeah. Specifically, healthcare insurance and Obamacare. Yeah. So we'll talk a little bit about Obamacare, and mostly just gonna rant about what I've seen regarding you know the ACA and and federal federal deficit after major uh, aspects of the law get enacted, and it's not good. Obamacare is not a very good law, in my opinion. Um, more people did get covered in the long term after it took a bunch of people off their health care and made them either enter the exchange or in a similar approved quote unquote uh, exchange of insurance. Um, and Wikipedia, I'm like, I've been I've been getting on Wikipedia for like over a decade at least. And everyone thinks that's like, time. oh, Wikipedia is not good and bleh. It's not. You know? it's I'm not, changing but... my no. I'm oh. completely changing my mind because what back, back this in is the happening day, right now? Yes, back in the day. <laughs> Probably okay, but I say back in the day, five five years ago, just five years ago, um, Wikipedia was very neutral, like very unbiased, and I'm just reading. I've been reading about the ACA for I mean past couple of days, and uh, it's extremely biased now. Uh, it's like I'm reading the Washington Post article about the ACA. How how is a how is the type of content that Wikipedia is? How is there a bias anyway? I thought it literally is just... Let me... Hold on. Let me find... I had a good example. Like a definition? I thought it was just the freaking definition, like, website, you know? Uh, No. it's. It, I mean, it used to be, like, an encyclopedia that anyone could edit, and then basically it was, like, you had to cite your source, and if your source was not credible, then it wasn't uh, allowed to be up, essentially. Uh, let's see. Uh, comment. So there's a, uh, so on the Wikipedia uh, page for the ACA, there is a, uh, I guess sub, sub chapter that says common misconceptions. So I clicked on that and I was like, huh, takes you right to this, this quote unquote death panels. Which I remember hearing about this in the in the after the 08 election, um, and this is what this is. I'm quoting Wikipedia here. This is what it says: On August seventh, two thousand nine, Sarah Palin created the term "death panels" to describe groups who would decide whether sick patients were quote worthy of medical care. Quote death panel referred to two claims about early drafts. It's like Sarah Palin didn't make up the term death panel. She didn't just like make it up. Like well, it's I been mean, around for a while, no, first know, of all, know, and that's but... what people were afraid of. And then I'm just saying, like it's on August seventh, two thousand. So I'm kind of thinking, what is the citation? So I'm going to look at it. Politifact. Oh no! Is the citation really? Yeah. Wow. Sarah dude. Palin falsely claims Barack, o- Barack Obama runs a death panel. What the Quote, heck? Unquote. Yeah. So I'm sure if you click on that. And read Politifact's articles. Gotta get my scotch going here. This is this is the quote. 
seniors and the disabled will quote uh, disabled quote will have to stand in front of Obama's death panel so his bureaucrats can decide based on the subjective judgment of their quote level of productivity in society whether they are worthy of health care. Now that was in oh gosh, that was dude. an early draft of the bill actually, but it was not in the ACA. Yeah, and uh, she posted that on Facebook. And they like, said pulled effects is the pants on fire, which of course it is. But I'm just saying it's uh it's weird that they instantly shove her as the uh, creator of the term death panel, and that's just like no, that's and then you quote political fact, you know, to as your source. This doesn't really say a lot about your credibility, in, in my opinion. I mean, it used to be like actual books that they would be, they would cite, and the the actual legislation, and they wouldn't throw in this stuff of common misperceptions and misconceptions. They would just kind of leave that out, you know. Yeah, because it's up to you. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you up to do the, your it's up own to the listener, dude. I want I want I want to know about the facts of Obamacare, not what Wikipedia yeah, this angle's right. There we go. Is gonna say is a misperception. Yeah, like what is it? What is Obamacare? How do you use it? And that's the only you know, I'm actually over here on the site right now applying. I'm applying to see what kind of coverages I can get as Obamacare. Because by the way, I'm twenty six years old, so I'm off my parents' insurance. And if you know mm. what, you know, screw you if you think I'm a bad person for being on my mom's for so long. She's a healthcare worker, so I was like, you know I what? mean I was I'm I gonna was, ride that out. Yeah. I don't care, man. I'm gonna you take tell me advantage I'm a freaking neutral all day, whatever. I do help her out. I work on her car sometimes, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, so I don't have health care. That's the point of that whole thing right now. I'm, not, I'm, I'm literally health careless. And under Trump's administration, that was okay per 2019 because there's no penalty for not having health care. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, it should be my choice. They got rid of the quote-unquote tax. And it wasn't right. a tax until, until uh, Chief Justice Roberts essentially said it was a tax. He said it was a fine. So that uh, there was a illegal challenge in twenty twelve, I think. Let me let me see. Yeah, the National Federation of Independent Businesses versus Sibelius, who was the uh, HHS director, Kathleen Sibelius, uh, at the time. On November fourteenth, two thousand eleven, the Supreme Court issued a writ of certiorari. To the U.S. Supreme Court of Appeals, 11th Circuit, to consider appeals to its rulings of the National Federation of Independent Businesses versus Spilius and Florida v. United States Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, so they decided it on uh, 2012. Oh, really? Okay, there you go. Uh, and it didn't get in, it didn't go in so place until freaking 2019. Is that the how that court? Worked? So the court declared the legislatively declared penalty. Was a was constitutional as a valid exercise of the congressional power to tax, thus upholding the individual mandate. What? Yeah, yeah. So, so they, they essentially but Chief Justice good. Robert. We re- can do that as a they, penalty. Yeah, exactly. They rewrote the law instead of a penalty, a fine. It says they said no. This is a tax. Tax. Yeah. And first of all, uh, I don't know. I think it was the Sixteenth Amendment that created the income U.S. income tax. That. I mean, the the income tax itself is unconstitutional except for that amendment. That amendment right. needs to be repealed, in my opinion. Oh, for sure. We talked about this before. Yeah, we talked exactly. about this before. But the thing is, is that it, Congress never, you know, they're lazy. They don't bring this up. It's the states. We would have to have a convention states. of states, and uh, we're not organized enough to do that, unfortunately. Um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, dude. Speaking of states, though, let's just caveat real quick. Not caveat. Sidebar. Segway. Are we proud of Abbott or what right now? For like, for, for freaking t- putting in an executive order, speaking of our last episode, and saying yeah. we're not going to have vaccine passports. No fourth. business can actually say that you need a vaccine to walk in. Well, I don't know if he said that. Did he say that, or did I, he just I, say I there's knew, no? I was reading some freaking news. There's going to be no. There's going to be no state issued passports. Well, I know he said that, but he was like, you can't. You can't force that on someone. Basically, he was saying businesses can't do it. Mm. That's what he was saying. He's saying maybe he meant health businesses, specifically hospitals. I don't know. I don't want to tell you. No, because I mean hospitals kind of need to know um, sometimes. Whether, especially if you're going to be an employee there. All right. So here I am, here I am on Obamacare's website. 
WellmanCareUSA.org, because I'm guessing we're going to have to use this again, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we're going back to that. Didn't he, like, repeal? Who? Wait, what? Didn't, he, didn't Biden already do reverse the executive order for um, the tax? Uh, I don't think so. So we still don't have a tax. There's still no penalty, as far as uh, as far as I know. Um, it it wants my phone number. Gosh, dude. <laughs> I want to give it my work cell that I don't use anymore. Yeah, uh, who's your third grade teacher? Uh, so graduate from one of the top health insurers and brokers. Blue Cross. Uh, so legislative history. This is really weird. You you want you want to hear this? <laughs> Of the of the ACA no. of the Affordable Care Act, <laughs> it was introduced in the House. Are you ready for this? Oh, this I'm is... I'm sitting down, dude. <laughs> I've got scotch in one hand. This it was introduced in the House Nothing as the as this piece of legislation. Ready? Service members home ownership tax of two thousand. Uh, sorry, service members home ownership tax act of two thousand nine. Later became the Affordable Care Act. Later became the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. They just changed the whole act. Oh, they no, they just added gobs and gobs of BS to it. Yeah, they didn't even like use it. That's it's how not they even the same thing anymore. That's how it was introduced in the House. Is HR thirty five ninety by Charles Rangel, Democrat from New York. It was considered by the Ways and Means Committee. I think that's why they did it, so it can be considered by that by the Ways and Means Committee instead of. The Health and Human Services Committee. So, I don't like all these committees we've been talking about, dude. I mean, that's been around since the inception I, of the country. I, I get it, dude, but like, there's just so many, and it feels like HR one we read about. Whenever you read that off, and HR one was that, creepy. Yeah, I was like, what's going on? Call your congressman about that one. What happened about that though? What What happened to that? They well, the House passed HR one. The Senate is amending it right now. What? Yeah, yeah, they passed it when we were talking about it. They were like, I didn't know. Pass that. If you guys want to see our previous episode on that, please you gotta do. Go please, see that, please, 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 please. This is over the $2 trillion infrastructure bill infrastructure bill that Biden's trying to pass, and it had HR1 in it. Correct? Did, no. Right? HR, that was it. No, it was HR1 like is trillion. totally no, totally separate. Two separate we things. We were reading off the infrastructure bill, and we went into HR1. Why did we go into HR1 then? Because we we're just talking about large government bills that Biden's doing this first. Days. I thought it was like all part of one because he was like it was like five trillion dollars. No, so the the HR one is its own uh, its own thing, and it became SB one, Senate Bill one. Um, and then the infrastructure bill that's still kind of in limbo. It's going to cost anywhere from two to five trillion dollars, is what I've heard. And that's a whole other beast. Damn. So if you guys want to see yeah. hear about uh, HR one, please go to our previous episode. I think it's episode forty two. Um, we talk about that, and it's crazy. Brutal. It's really weird. We're getting into some weird committees being created to uh, change the voting systems in a way that would hurt everyone, not just, you know, help them. Well, actually, it probably would just help them because they would manipulate it. Maybe. Possibly. So, <laughs> it was uh, passed in the House November 7, 2009, and then passed in the Senate as the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act on December 24th, Christmas Eve, 2009, with amendment. Uh, the House agreed to the amendment in March 2010, and then it was signed into law by President uh, Obama on March 23rd, 2010. So that one doesn't go to the so House and the Senate? It was House and then Obama? House and then Senate, and then back to House and then Obama. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. now what we're doing with HR1 is it's, it's at Senate and it'll go back it's to the House. It's at the Senate, yeah, and the House and it goes back to You were House saying last time Senate's probably just going to cut that down. Well, maybe. Maybe. Okay. If they get rid of the filibuster, then... It's I mean, they'll they'll pass anything. They don't. They only need fifty votes, and they've got Kamala Harris as a tiebreaker. So, cool. Wow, that's crazy. Dude. But Georgia's going to have another election here pretty soon. In twenty, I think twenty twenty two is is when Warnock yeah. is was Warnock is up. So, I don't know if he'll get elected again. Do you hear what he said on Easter? This is kind of like beside the point, but Warnock said that. Uh, uh, Easter transcends the resurrection of Christ, and then and then he said that through uh, acts of of giving that you could save yourself. Yeah, and I was like, that's a 
That's kind of like a satanic Easter message, isn't it? That's <laughs> completely the you opposite. Are your, you are your own god. There is no Jesus, yeah. essentially. It's like, wait a minute. Literally uh, the opposite, uh, mate. Yeah, like Easter, there's nothing that can transcend the resurrection of Christ, first of all. <laughs> and then, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it's, that's yeah. literally what Easter is about. Like, so, he, he's a reverend, by the way. Oh, no. Yeah. I didn't know that. He also had Fidel Castro in his church. And was like, yay, Fidel. We love Fidel. Waving a little Cuban flag. In, in Georgia, right? How weird is that? Facts. Dude, I and didn't he's know a senator. any of that stuff, dude. You're killing me right he's now, He's a man. senator, dude. He's a senator from Georgia right now. It blows my mind. You have two Democrat senators. Yeah, if you really think you can get anywhere with just your own acts, you're insane. Yeah. If that, like, if, if that was in question. If that was in question, right? Uh-huh. And you're wondering, hmm, how would I get to heaven if I was going to get to heaven, right? It's you obviously, nice obviously guy. going good. going right. past all the other like questions you might have or whatever. Right. But like, dude, holy crap, man. That's insane. <sighs> Moving on though. Yeah, so, so you're right though, uh the, the Trump tax cuts in twenty seventeen that got rid of the individual mandate uh penalty, effectively making it zero dollars. Uh, which brought up new uh, challenges to the law in Texas. And the Supreme Court still sided with Obamacare. They still said, no, it's, it's, uh, it's here to stay. So that was kind of Trump's like backdoor way of getting rid of Obamacare. You know, like, oh, we got off the courts. He kind of like changed it, changed the tax plan. Um, and said we should let the courts decide, and they, they strike it down again. I really hope the three justices that he appointed, you know, don't, don't let us down over the next four years. Cause that's the only check against the Democrats right now. Like That's it. That's our thin red line, bro. Unless you're a part of these conspiracies, they're what? still saying stuff's going to happen, you know? Like what? I, I guess they're saying there's still a ton of troops at the Capitol because, you know, they're going to do something. I don't know, dude. There's, I don't know. There's people out there saying this crap. Steve, one of the people was like, yeah, now they're saying it's going to be, you know, this day and like they're going, they're just Trump's going to, yeah, back I'm like, like, dude, you can't, you got to stop at some point. Trump, if I were him, is done until 2024, period. Yeah. And I would do exactly what he's doing. I'd go to my resort. I'd take my kids, my wife. Play be a like, ton of golf. I'm just going to hang out, have a good time. Yeah. We're in oh, tuck- that's what he was doing as president. No, dude. We're in tucked in he polos all that. the time. That's like all he does. Okay. Yeah, he was doing some stuff. What? What do you mean? Everyone says, that, well, he was already playing. Everyone would probably say, well, he's already playing okay. golf all yeah. the time. Like, Biden can't play golf. Okay? So that's the only reason he's not. Because <laughs> he would be. <laughs> he would. That'd be disastrous. <laughs> like a dang. This kid probably does, you know? Hunter? Hunter probably plays golf. I mean, there's a picture of him. Yeah, they do play golf because there's a picture of Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, and the president of Burisma Holdings sitting together playing golf. What are they doing? They're playing golf, right? Yeah, they're playing golf. Because every freaking business deal happens over golf. Exactly, right? But, you know, uh, Biden said that me and my son have never talked business, period, ever, on one conversation. Like, dude, come on. You're right. I don't know what I would rather have. Blatant bluntness or blatant lying lies. i like mean it's blatantly I'd obvious blatant lies bluntness. yeah or the blatant, like, bluntness of Trump. type yeah like uh what do you call that uh it's there's something called there's like a, a personality trait and they just call it or whatever but boisterous uh, boisterous is that what it is mm, yeah i think so yeah so I just applied and i got these back i got the choices back it's obviously the only freaking healthcare you ever hear about huh? um Blue Cross, mm-hmm. Pick Health is a broker, and then Texas Private Health broker, hmm. Health Plan Market broker, AffordableHealthPlans.org broker. These are all options Obamacare USA is giving me. United States Insurance, Affordable Health Insurance. They're, these are all the cheesiest, most generic, obvious brokers. It's like driving down the street and seeing an Amax insurance. You know, the yellow and black Amax, $29 a month liability. <laughs> Guaranteed. 
That's so dumb, dude. And then going to the regular healthcare site, so healthcare.gov, it's the same thing. You go ahead and you take the first step to apply, and you apply, and they give you basically tons of brokers. Which, if you guys don't know what a broker is, essentially it's some guy out there that says he's working for you, get you the best deal. And he might. He might actually be a genuine dude. I don't know. You never really know. But you're you're taking the gamble on that. And so whenever you pick this guy, he's going to shop around for you to his health insurances. Mm-hmm. And he's going to give you the quote-unquote best one. And then, bam you've got the health insurance. But let's compare that to walking up to a doctor during a doctor's visit and telling him what you have. And he's going to prescribe you the best medication. Well, behind the scenes... No matter what, behind the scenes, you never know what's happening. That doctor could be getting paid differently for that medicine that he's giving you. Just like that broker could be getting paid differently for that insurance he's giving you. Mm-hmm. You never really know, and that is a problem, and I get that. So you just have to do your due diligence, do your research. Don't just fall for whatever. Don't just take Adderall. You know, not saying not to. I'm just saying that you don't have to. I mean, they are given different spiffs and benefits for these things exactly and that's part of the reason that we have some problems but there is no one single reason why the healthcare system is the way it is yeah it's a i mean it's extremely complex yeah it's it's almost like to where we're to the point where we actually do need a complete overhaul I yeah. think. I mean, you can't really have a half and half system like we have. Like we have a uh, heavily subsidized system, but it's also heavily regulated. So that's just going to drive prices through the roof, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and contrary to popular belief, when uh, insurance goes up, so does all the other prices. Exactly. The hospital bills go up too, buddy. They don't just keep their same prices. They charge more because insurance charges more. And if you think it's expensive now, then just wait until inflation kicks in in a few years. Prices of everything are gonna gonna go up drastically within the next five years. It will be within the next five years, and that's also like housing market stuff is on that too. So if you're in the housing market right now, you know it's a seller's market, and it will be for a little while. Yeah, and uh, it's not gonna be pretty. Whenever they, whenever it falls. Exactly. Yeah. You got to be careful with everything. I mean, I can, I can see, I can see people losing $50,000 of equity like that. Um, yeah. And you're like, dang, what Especially do I do? in the DFW area. That's what I'm kind of concerned about is. DFW area. Yeah. Because there is a bubble well, in DFW. And luckily for you. Well, didn't you buy like, it's not like a crazy high priced area, right? No. See, and that's what's going to get people. Mm. Like this area, he bought his house a while ago, but this area, Chapel Creek, like places like that, it's going to get insane. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the... Uh, and then they're going to be screwed. That new development... You're not going to be as screwed. You're going to be probably pretty good. That new development's going to be interesting to see what happens with those prices. Which one are we talking about? Uh, oh, gosh. What is it? Uh, uh, Walsh Ranch? Another Walsh Ranch. There's already a Walsh Ranch, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But, but Walsh yeah, Ranch yeah. in general, as it's, a it's already insane. As dude. a project, is the largest in the in the DFW. In, in no, in the U.S. Are largest you serious? largest planned living. Of course, it's area in Alito, in, dude. In the U.S., yeah. Of course, it's in Alito. Yeah, it's gonna and be Alito like, ISD too, which is crazy to think about. It Alito is growing very, very, very rapidly. Yeah, that's not good. I don't think. I think it's gonna bite them. Last twenty years, especially. it's think that's gonna bite them later yeah. if you guys are familiar with dfw there's a little talk about uh, dfw yeah, local, local stuff talk. if you're a local please hit us up we want to hang out with you so yeah. dude hit us up we'll hang out we're not we're just sure. normal people we're, we're not normal famous, dudes yeah you know? all right Oof. so <laughs> <a> little spiel there <laughs> gosh so taxes in the aci aca uh the Affordable Care Act raised sixteen point three billion in twenty fifteen, and eleven billion came from an excise tax placed on directly on health insurers based on their market share. Annual, so that's why insurance premiums went up because they just pass it on to the consumer. 
Annual excise taxes totaling $3 billion were levied on importers and manufacturers of prescription drugs. I'm not totally opposed to that. Uh, Let's see. But then again, that's why prescription drug prices are going to go up. The individual mandate was $695 per individual per year uh, or $2,000 per family at a minimum, reaching as high as 2.5% of household income. Holy crap. Whichever was higher. Uh, the tax was reduced to, reduced to zero at the end of 2018. Because of Trump. Yep. Just wanted to go ahead and spout that in there real quick. Yep. Um, that's uh, insane, dude. So the percent, this is how they, uh, the uh, total federal excise tax percentage of the total funds raised. Uh, fuel is 38%. Uh, the ACA was 17%. This is for federal excise taxes, their total excise taxes. Uh, tobacco is after the ACA, then aviation, then alcohol, and then other. That's 6%. So fuel is by far the most excise tax thing uh, from the federal government. It is 38%. Mm-hmm. Jeez. I wonder when they actually implemented that tax, that 38%. Because, you know, like, yeah. we had that issue last year or year before that. Sorry. I for, dude, you know what's crazy is I forget last year existed sometimes. Was so when 2020? I say, when I say last year, I think 2019. Oh, yeah. Even though I was still out and about. And well, I'm sure a lot stuff, of people would just want to gloss over 2020. They might. And I, I will say this. It did hit hard. But you know what, dude? Texas forever. <laughs> so 2019, they had those, that barrel issue where they we ordered too much or something. Sorry, there was like an overproduction of oil. And so we had mm-hmm. literally oil off the coast just sitting there waiting to get bought. And so gas prices like plummeted because mm. they needed to get it done. Yeah. Now I wonder what happened to the tax then, you know, like, I don't know. It just seems weird. Barrels were going for the 40s. That's when the oil, you know, oil field like lost a ton of people. Mm-hmm. Uh. Well, I was talking to my mom a couple of days. Do you have some more stuff to talk about Obamacare? Uh, just real quick. Uh, so this so here's another bit of biased a Wikipedia example. Oh, dude, I, I read yeah, this earlier, that. and I was like, "What?" Uh, the AC the ACA reduced income inequality measured after taxes due to the tax income surcharges and subsidies. The economic record of the Obama administration: progress reducing inequality. Whitehouse.gov. So, basically, just White House propaganda. Uh, <laughs> CBO estimated that subsidies paid under the law in 2016 Can't get away from it now, dude. averaged $4,240 so $4,240 per person for 10 million individuals receiving them roughly $42 billion so they paid out $42 billion in subsidies for those people in 2016 yet they only brought in $11.3 billion in, no sorry $16.3 billion in fiscal year 2015. So, tells you how much money Obamacare is hemorrhaging. And yeah, it says it, it and another uh, part in Wikipedia says that it reduced the federal deficit. I'm like, no, it didn't. I'm literally reading Wikipedia again, and it's blatantly saying roughly $42 billion for 10 million people. And they only took in $16.3 billion. The tax subsidy for the employee market was appro- approximately seventeen hundred dollars per person in twenty sixteen, or two hundred and sixty six billion dollars total. Tax subsidies. <laughs> it's blatant misinformation. Golly! But you know that's what Wikipedia has always been blamed for, even before now. Yeah. No one was on board with, or everyone I talked to. It sucks because I actually don't end up telling them you get your stuff from Wikipedia because of the reactions I get. Yeah. They'll be well, like. Wikipedia, like you know, uh-huh. and I'll be like, you gotta, you gotta know what you're looking at. When exactly. you're looking at Wikipedia, you gotta, you gotta know what you're looking at. Just click on that little hyperlink. And the see sources where they got, matter, got and source. that's what Wikipedia is so good at, right? Always giving the sources, mm-hmm. even in a biased article like that, they give their sources. I gotta give them that. Yeah, exactly. I actually donated to Wikipedia last year, really, because they were gonna close down. Of and Wikipedia has been that. a big deal. They say that. Well, now that I'm seeing this stuff, no, and gonna now that YouTube is gonna freaking censor me, you know what? Screw y'all. Yeah, don't give your money to big tech. Screw y'all. They don't need it. Wikipedia does not need your money. (sighs) I am so tired of that, dude. And that... (sighs) Gonna get me worked up again, dude. 
Yeah. So I call my mom the other day, right? Mm-hmm. You know, my weekly chat with mom. Anyway, and I'm like, hey, mom. First question, I was like, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. I haven't called her in a while, actually. I don't talk to her weekly. I probably should. <laughs> terrible. I'm like, yeah, terrible, terrible son. son. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> I'm like, so how does insurance work for you guys? Because uh-huh. she works at a, at a uh, Texas Spine and Joint. She okay. runs an office over there, so she does all like the scheduling for radiology and stuff like that. And she's worked in radiology for like most of her life, honestly. Oh wow! So she used to be a radiology tech and all that stuff, right? I'm like, how does insurance work for y'all? What is the actual process that happens? Mm-hmm. Like when a patient walks in, I have this insurance, and you guys say we work with that insurance. What happens then? Okay. She's like, oh, okay. So we have to get the CPT code. I'm like, okay, what is that? Yeah. CPT code is just a, a number or letters and numbers or whatever code that specifies the procedure. Okay. So it's a code because they have so many different types of procedures, almost like building a car. Right. You can have an MRI, but what about an MRI for this? Or what about uh-huh. an MRI with this or yep. that or all these different options, right? And yeah, exactly. So they have the codes listed, hmm. bam, 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 and then they get to match those codes to what the insurance will cover because the insurance also uses those codes. So it's a so standardized, they, co- standardized coding standardized system. Standardized coding system. Okay. So when they find those codes, ding, 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 they cover it, we're good. And then the insurance will say, we cover this part of the code or that part of the code or none of the code, but just that, you know? Yeah. Insurance will do that too. So that's another thing they trick you with. Now, after that, okay, the code matches. We're on to step three. Step three, because first step was patient. Step three, they're going to get the procedure done. And then they have to bill the insurance. Insurance doesn't worry about any of that crap. Yeah. Insurance knows it's going on, but they're not going to go ahead and send you money if you're not going to ask for the money. Right. So the off, the office, that's the reason they have schedulers and five different freaking people working scheduling instead of just one. Because they're like, well, we have to keep up with money. Because if we don't ask for the money and keep up with it, insurance will never give it to us. Right. It's like extended warranties at dealerships. Mm-hmm. Keep calling them, hey, please buy or pay or whatever, and that's it. So next thing you know, my mom or whoever is calling them and saying, hey, we want our 1500 bucks. It's not using 1500 bucks. Cat scans are like six grand. Mm-hmm. We want our six grand, like ASAP. Okay, well, here's the thing. We didn't cover it, blah, 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 and they had to fight them. Yeah. So you're fighting with one. This is one patient you're fighting for out here. And you have dozens of patients. You have of patients dozens to of with. patients to deal with. Right. And you end up in a big cluster. Um, the F thing is, like my mom was saying, is they, you know, they will raise their prices to the consumer and then her clinic has to raise their prices. She doesn't control that. Huh. They don't really have to. Yeah. But they do. I mean, right. They probably have to to stay in business. And every year they come up with new ways not to cover something on purpose, because that's obviously the whole point. Of insurance, mm-hmm. right? That's how they make money by not covering stuff. So, because yeah. they just keep the money that you give them. So, like this year, it was you can't do two different procedures in one day. That's a lot of insurances mm-hmm. are doing that. Mm-hmm. So, if a doctor's like, you need an MRI and a CAT scan, or you need an MRI and this blood test or something as a procedure, you can't do that. They won't pay for the second one. And it's not technically my mom's job or someone else's job to tell them that, to tell the consumer that. So they could keep going with those procedures. They could do those two procedures, and the patient would be like, here we go, ha-ha, I'm covered. You know, because, like, you walk in and they say, yeah, your insurance is covered by us. Mm-hmm. We have a contract. Yeah. Next thing you know, they get a bill for five grand because the second procedure wasn't covered. And they're going to choose the cheaper one that they pay for, the insurance is. Right, of course. So the blood test is paid for, 200 bucks. The MRI, CAT scan, no. So exactly. My mom has been working out a way to tell the patient and get them scheduled separate days. Well, now you get it, dude, it's insane. It's crazy. So that's all the insurance spill I got for you, for you guys. Maybe we'll have someone on the show that can talk more yeah, about hopefully. how insurance works at their facilities. I want any healthcare worker because I'm trying, I am trying to basically make a dent in what people think about the healthcare industry. Yeah. You can't, and, you can't really have a glib opinion about the healthcare industry one way or the other. You can't just say, Oh, well, you know, socialized medicine is bad. 
because of this, or you can't just say, oh, the free market's bad because of this, or you can't just say, oh, all insurance is all crooks because of this, because it's it really is extremely complicated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, it's like making generalizations. Won't won't really get us anywhere, um, right. unfortunately. But uh, I think the ACA definitely made things way more complicated instead of simplifying them. Mm-hmm. I think if we could just buy insurance over state lines, like you could car insurance, I think that would make things way easier. Uh, it would force companies to nationalize their standards. And compete and com- nationally. And compete nationally. That's what we need right now. We need to know the prices. Mm-hmm. Of the medicine we pay for, yep, and we need to know or have comp- competition. So itemized uh, hospital bills, itemized hospital bills. But you have those to exist, ask. You have to ask for them. You have to ask for them. Yep. I think. Yep. I want to say that the Trump administration made them uh, mandatory. So my mom was saying that too. Insurance doesn't normally cover like almost anything else besides the procedure. So like mm-hmm. ibuprofens or Tylenols or band aids or whatever, right? Yep. And that'll be on there, and they charge for that because insurance doesn't cover it. They can charge whatever they want. And you'll get thirty dollars for a band aid or whatever, yep. and you're like, Man, I heard of that. No, nah, you need to get that off of there, right? Yeah. Like, and you're supposed to be able to see this before, before you start things. Yeah. Before you go in to do a procedure, yeah. Before you walk, because once in, you have you the band aid on, open. you know you open the package. It's it's open, it's, right? So so it's you, like the hotel mini bar. Like once that little, I mean, and you I just think spent five bucks a little somehow people have built people. The hospitals have built a culture uh-huh. of not asking, like feeling weird about asking for stuff like that. Like I do, if I go and sitting away sit in a waiting room, <clears throat> and then I I'm about to go in. To a dentist office or whatever. Yeah, I got into where like I'm like, how much is this gonna be? Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know until she looks at your teeth. Okay, I don't go any further. As soon as I see the dentist, hey, check me out and tell me what I need, and we'll go from there. You don't even put that little suction straw because in my mouth is, until you tell me. How because much this, this is how it cost. goes. This is a service, and I'm paying you for that. Yep. And I it got to where like we were thinking like I'm trying to put this in the camera, <laughs> we were thinking like doctors and all of them were like up here and we're down here to them. Mm-hmm. And I get that they're first line responders or whatever, fine, but we still pay them. Like I mean, it's we, like politicians, you know. We still. <laughs> the politicians oh are like way up here. Right? Oh my gosh! Look at that. <laughs> we and we still pay them. Yeah. And. Unless they are, you know, smuggling money and money laundering and lobbying behind our backs. Oh, wait. I saw a funny meme. It was like, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, God dang it, I forgot it. It was, uh, thieves caught on camera stealing trillions of dollars, and it was just a big picture of Congress. Uh, like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. It is funny. But it's not funny at the same time, but it's true. It's, it's like, it's not funny because it's true, like, it's dark very humor, sad. And it's like, oh, man, that's. Kinda it's hurts. a good meme. Hurts. And I would have laughed too, man. Yeah. But then you're like, it's one of those memes where you're like, it's like zebra striped gum. You're like, <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know? Like, and then oh, you're just sad about man. it. <laughs> Dang. So we think they're up there, and now we're, I think maybe we might realize, or I did anyway, that they're not. We're paying them for We're paying for that. Mm-hmm. I'm, pay, I'm about to pay her for digging into my mouth. So you best, be, you best believe, Brother Bear, that I'm going to freaking tell her, hey, give me those prices. Yeah, you know, show me what you're working with. If you show me mine, I'll show you. If, if you show me yours, I'll show you mine. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. Butcher that. All right. Anyway, what but think? I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think you just have to be like you said. Do your due diligence. Do your due diligence when it comes to. Now I got you freaking talking. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. Getting uh, getting your pricing down, your coverage down, and I think, I think too like too much regulation and too much subsidization by the federal government has overcomplicated things tremendously. And if you just reduce both, just reduce both down down the line, you're going to bring costs way down. Mm-hmm. People are going to be so much happier with their, with their health care, for sure. Um, I don't remember where he got it, but Ben Shapiro said that you can have three, or there's three things in health care that you want, right? There's universality or, or quality, same thing there's accessibility there's a uh, affordability and then there's uh 
accessibility, I believe. So yeah, quality, accessibility, or universality. Sorry, I mixed up those two. Um, and then affordability. But really, you can only pick two. It can be affordable and accessible, but the quality is not going to be that good. Or it can be really high quality and really accessible, but the affordability is not going to be there. So yeah. it, it's kind of like you've got to play the balancing game mm-hmm. of all three or you know it, it's like yeah, uh, it. yeah i get it dude. it's also like having uh it's also like a woman you know you can either this will get me in trouble i'm just gonna say it that's funny uh she can either be smart pretty or uh oh gosh what's the third one uh or sane you pick two she's either gonna be really funny or not not really really smart and totally totally normal not insane or anything but she's not gonna be that good looking she's gonna be really good looking and really uh smart but she's gonna be crazy she's gonna be a psycho <laughs> crazy hot skill yeah yeah it, it it's it's a thing it's i true. apologize Pick two. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding dude uh, I wonder what so Sierra true. will say. She hears it. She, what the heck? She, she knows which two she is. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Holy crap. And on that note, we're going to end it. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Yeah. And uh, please, as always, like, share, subscribe. Please, guys. Please share it. Come on, just one. And I just uh, want you guys to tell people about this show so they can learn what we've learned and what we continue to learn. And check out our YouTube clips. They're good. Scott so, does a lot of good uh, good stuff on there. Even if YouTube takes down our video, just like it, I will still have YouTube clips. What it'll be is you know easy to watch, freaking four minute clips, mm-hmm. so you don't have to watch this whole hour long episode. Because I get that. Yes. So go over there. Toasty clips is all it is. It's a playlist on my on the Toasty podcast mm-hmm. page. Obviously, be sure and subscribe and hit the notification bell too. All right, guys, stay toasty. Stay toasty. Toasty.